The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today we're going to take what we learned in the previous lesson about 555 timers and apply that knowledge to make LED dominoes. I got the idea for today's project from a video made back in 2011 by Randy Elwin. Randy used a 555 timer to make a one-shot timer that uses an LDR, or photoresistor, to trigger the timer to turn on an LED for a short time. When more than one of these are placed in a row, each device triggers the next, lighting up in sequence like dominoes. Let's take a look at the 555 to see what we need to do to make our circuit. Here I've got my 555 on some perf board. Let's go through all the connections we need to make the LED domino work. First, power. The 555 needs anywhere between 5 and 15 volts. The original circuit used one button cell battery, but that wasn't enough power when I tried it out, so I'm using a 9 volt battery. The output is going to connect to an LED. It can be any color as long as the resistor is the correct value and it's bright enough to trigger the LDR. I'm going to start with white. The white LED is rated for 3.2 volts and 20 milliamps. There's a little bit of power loss between VCC and the output. Let's see what that is. Looking at the datasheet of the 555 timer, we're given the output voltages for if VCC equals 15, which is 12.75 minimum to a typical 13.3 volts. And if VCC equals five volts, then minimum output voltage is 2.75 with typical voltage of 3.3 volts. So if I use a 9 volt battery, using the same math, then that would give me a minimum output voltage of about 6.75 volts and a typical of about 7.3 volts. I'll average those out and use an output of 7 volts when factoring resistance for my LED. 7 volt output, 3 volt LED, 20 milliamps equals 200 ohms. So I'll use the closest common value I have, a 220 ohm resistor. In the last episode, we learned that when the trigger is pulled low, the comparator goes high, setting the 555's internal flip-flop and the 555 output goes high. To achieve this, pin 2 needs to normally be connected to VCC, but be able to be pulled low to ground. We can do this by using a resistor and a photoresistor, or LDR. I have a bunch of photoresistors that have unknown resistances, so I use my multimeter to see what they register at in the dark or in ambient light. Most were over 10 kilo ohms. And when I shine my flashlight on them, they drop down to between 500 and 2 kilo ohms. 10 kilo ohms seems like a good rating, so pin 2 gets connected to VCC with a 10 kilo ohm resistor and to ground with the LDR. In normal light, R2 at the 10k ohm is lower than the resistance of the LDR, so pin 2 is pulled high to VCC. When enough light is shown on the LDR, its resistance drops to less than 10 kilo ohms, and pin 2 is pulled low to ground. This triggers the 555 to output high, and the light turns on. Now let's talk about how we set up the circuit to automatically reset low. Pin 6, threshold, needs to be pulled high to reset the 555. So we need pin 6 to be held low, but be able to be pulled high temporarily. We can do that by making an RC circuit using a resistor and a capacitor. Pin 6 is connected to ground, holding it low through a capacitor. Then connected to VCC with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Pin 6 is then also tied to pin 7, discharge. If you remember from the previous lesson, pin 7 is internally connected to a transistor that is on when the 555 output is low and off when the output is high. So when pin 2 is triggered and the 555 goes high, the transistor is off, so the capacitor connects to VCC and begins charging up. Remember, this means that pins 6 and 7 will have the same voltage as the capacitor. With enough charge, pin 6 goes above 2 thirds VCC, resetting the 555. This also causes the capacitor to short to ground through pin 7 and discharge down. The time it takes for the capacitor to charge up and reset the 555 can be calculated using this equation. Time equals 1.1 times the resistor value times the capacitor value. So to get the circuit to reset after about one second, I can use a 10 kilo ohm resistor and a 100 microfarad capacitor. That's all the relevant connections in our circuit. Let's go over the remaining pins so we can button this up. 
To prevent pin 4 from resetting the 555, it needs to be held high. So pin 4 gets connected to VCC. And since we're not using pin 5, it gets connected to ground with a 0.01 microfarad capacitor that helps eliminate any noise. Okay, that's everything. Time to solder. Place the 555 on the perf board. Position the LDR so that it's sticking off the end of the board. The leads are the same, so orientation doesn't matter. One lead gets connected to ground, so it can be soldered to pin one. Solder the other lead to pin two, as well as a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Place the 10 kilo ohm resistor with the lead connecting to pin two, and the second lead will bend over. Later, it will connect to VCC. A second 10 kilo ohm resistor will be placed with one lead connecting to pin seven, and the other will also go to VCC. Pin three is the output. Connect a 220 ohm resistor. The other end will connect to the anode of the LED. Position the LED so that it sticks off the end of the board. Bend the anode to connect with the 220 ohm resistor. And the cathode the other way will go to ground. Pin five needs a 0.01 microfarad capacitor, which will connect to ground. Pin six needs a 100 microfarad polarized capacitor. The positive lead goes to pin six and the negative lead will connect to ground. Pins six and seven can be joined together. Pin eight needs to connect to VCC. Since pin seven's 10 kilo ohm resistor also connects to VCC, that pin can be bent over to connect pin eight. All of the VCC connections will go here and all of the ground connections will go here. Pin one is ground, so a black wire can run from pin one to the ground cluster. Pin four goes to VCC, so a red wire can connect pin four to the VCC cluster. Last is adding the 9 volt battery snap. To help keep it secure, I'll first thread it through the corner hole of the perf board and hot glue it there in place. The red and black wires get trimmed and connect to the VCC and ground clusters. All the VCC connections get soldered together. Pin 2's 10 kilo ohm resistor, pin 7's 10 kilo ohm resistor, the red wire from pin 4, pin 8, and the red wire from the 9 volt battery snap. and all the ground connections get soldered together. The negative lead of the LED, the 0.01 microfarad capacitor, the 100 microfarad capacitor, the black wire from pin one, and the negative lead from the nine volt battery snap. Just gotta plug in a nine volt battery and grab a flashlight to test it out. a bunch in a row to see the domino effect. Rather than using a flashlight, the design can be adjusted so that the first domino is the light trigger. Replace the LDR with a button that manually shorts pin 2 to ground. Push the button to trigger the 555 to turn on the first light. To customize your LED dominoes, change the color of the LEDs, or play with changing the values of the resistor and capacitor in the RC circuit to change the timing of the light. Make your own and try laying them out in different patterns to see the different looks and effects you can create. I'd love to see what you come up with. Post videos of your finished project on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.